series called Better. I appreciate this, the songs this morning because uh, Better is one day in the that was one of our uh, messages uh, a couple weeks ago. And today we're going to talk about a better name. So what the name song is one of those to talk about that. So we're studying the idea that we're going to have to let go of the good in order to grab on and hold on to something that's better. We need to stop settling for the good life. The good life is okay, but we need to stop settling for the good life. And, and, be, and the reason for that is because God has something better, something indescribably better in store for, for us as Christians. So that's what we're looking at. Now today we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. Um, that will be our theme scripture today. So grab your Bibles, turn to Proverbs 22, verse 1. Now, if you don't bring your Bible, there are Bibles in the back of the page you can grab. Page 488, in case you can't find um, Proverbs chapter 22. If you, if you go to the middle, basically, the middle of the Bible, you'll pretty much land on Proverbs just about every time. But page 488 in the back of the page uh, if you want to turn there. Proverbs 22, 1. Solomon wrote this. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Now last week we talked about silver and gold being better, or being, I'm sorry, wisdom being better than silver or gold. This week it's a good name. And we, we talked about how silver and gold in scripture means wealth, power, and prestige. You could say that today it might mean that we want a bigger house, or a better car, or a, a better um, wardrobe. And, 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 and the Bible says that there is something better, and that's having a good name. Having a good name means having a good reputation. It's what you're known for. And so, as we begin today, let me ask this question. What are you known for? What are you known for? When somebody says your name, what do they think of? What are you known for? Now, that can be spelled a lot, and many times can be thought of in our heads. When we think about having a good name or having a good reputation, we think that we've got to be perfect. We think that we've got to get everything right in our lives, in order in our lives, in order to have this good name and good reputation about us. But I want to give you our key thought for today, and it's this a good name doesn't mean that you're perfect. A good name means that you're being perfected by the one who is. And that's Jesus Christ. A good name doesn't mean that you're perfect, but it means that you're being perfected by the one who is, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus is making us perfect. Isn't it interesting how a name can conjure up thoughts and ideas and notions about a person? You think of a name and you go, oh yeah, well they're the ones that do such and such, right? I want to illustrate it this way. When I say these names, think about the images, the thoughts that come into your mind. Okay, here's the first one. I'll show the pictures up on the screen. Here we go, ready? Adolf Hitler. Next one, Billy Graham. Is to endeavor 
to be what you desire to appear. In other words, envision who you are in the future and do everything you can to get there. If you can do that, then you'll have a good name, a good reputation. So a good name is better, and the question is, why? Why? Why is a good name better? I'll give you three reasons this morning. I'm going to go through these a little quickly. But number one, a good name instills confidence. A good name instills confidence. What do I mean by that? Proverbs 10, 9 says, The man of integrity walks securely. But he who takes crooked paths will be found out. Remember when we were kids and um, we couldn't hide anything from our parents? It's like they knew everything. <laughs> you know, you couldn't take a single cookie from the cookie jar because they knew you had done that. Now, I don't know how they do it. It's not like they were sitting around counting cookies and saying, oh, somebody, somebody took a cookie from the cookie jar. For me, if you were like me, it was the chocolate smearing all over my face. That's how mom knew I was into the cookie jar, right? So, so but that, that, that's what happens to us, right? When, when we get our hands in the cookie jar, and then what? We eat the cookie and we walk around fearing that somebody's going to find out. We don't walk so confidently because we've done something wrong. We don't walk securely. You start gossiping about a friend. And what are you afraid of? You're afraid that friend's going to find out that you start that rumor about them. Maybe you didn't put in a full hour, about 40 hours at work this past week. And, uh, and, and for a while now, you really haven't been putting forth the effort in your job like you should be. What are you afraid of? You're afraid that the boss man's going to find out that you haven't been working uh, like you should be. Um, maybe some of you are having inappropriate conversations on Facebook and you're worried someone's going to find out. What if somebody sees this? You're not walking so confidently anymore. Maybe you're having a, a, an inappropriate relationship with someone at work or online or wherever it is and you're afraid you're going to get caught. You're not walking with confidence you're not, because you're not walking in integrity. Because when you walk in integrity, the scripture says you walk secure. You walk with your, with your head up all the time. There's a difference when you walk with integrity. And as you do, it builds your confidence. And your good name begins to develop and, and build to instill confidence within you. So a good name instills confidence. Number two, why is a good name matters? A good name speaks for you. Good name speaks for you. Now we see this illustrated. I love 2 Chronicles chapter 9. Uh, here, uh, King Solomon is he's in his courts, and we find the Queen of Sheba. It's kind of interesting to, to hear what Solomon has to say. The Queen of Sheba comes to visit King Solomon to have a conversation. The Queen of Sheba had heard about Solomon and how, how wise he, this man was, and she wanted to come and find out for herself. Solomon's reputation went before him. She came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. Gentlemen in the room, have you ever been tested by a lady with hard questions? <laughs> I see all those being thrown out there. Now, I don't know what the Queen's questions were, uh, but could you imagine if someone, do I look fabulous? <laughs> Now, I would love to know Solomon's answer to that question because Solomon's the wisest man on the earth. You know, and so his answer had to be really, really good, right? But I don't know what she asked him, you know. But anyway, she comes to King Solomon to get questions, questions and answers. And, and she came to talk to him about all that she had on her mind. And I love what's recorded in 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 2. Solomon answered all the questions. Nothing was too hard for him to explain. Then the queen, this is, it, it's better. The queen says to Solomon in verses 5 and 6, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true. But I didn't believe what they said until I came and saw with my own eyes. Get this. Indeed, not even half the greatness of your wisdom was told to me. 
you have far exceeded the report I have. The good deed speaks for you. And, and when somebody has heard about you, and then they meet you, do you far exceed the report that's going on before you? That's what happened here. Your reputation can go before you. How many of you have ever heard about a person before in your life? You've heard all about this person. You feel like you know this person. Somebody has described this person to you in such detail that you feel like, man, you are one-on-one -on -one with this person, and you would know them if they were stuck in a crowd somewhere. You could point them out. That's, that's, what, that's what I mean by the reputation goes before you. A good thing speaks before you. When we talked about those names a little bit ago, Billy Graham and Mother Teresa, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., their reputation went before them. When they were given their names at birth, it didn't mean much to us, you know. We didn't know them. But as they walked through life with integrity, and as they allowed God to use them and get His will done for their lives and the lives around them, we got to know these people were. Their names today speak for themselves. Good name is more desirable than great riches, Solomon said. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. So a good name instills confidence, a good name speaks for you, and, and I think here's what I'm going to spend a lot of time on. The third, the third point. A good name inspires others. A good name inspires others. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, follow my example. As I follow the example of Christ. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. That's what Paul said. Then you, you can almost get a sense, as you read the Corinthian letter, you can almost get a sense that these guys, they really didn't know how to live their lives. They were trying really hard to, to, to do what was right, but they really didn't grasp the concept of Christianity and, and what that all meant. And Paul basically comes to them and he says, Look at what I do. Look at what I do. I'm following the footsteps of Jesus Christ. I've had my life after Jesus Christ. If you do what I do, chances are you're going to be pretty good. If you, in, in other words, Paul says, be inspired by Jesus Christ. Here's what I want to say: If you get nothing else out of this today, get this. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ, if you're a Christian. Write this down. You should be inspired by You should inspire other people. If you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you should inspire other people. Really. People should be able to look at you and be like, you know, I don't really get it right now, but I want to do some really hard stuff, some tough times that they can't do whatever it is. They're going through some tough times. They should really be depressed and down and out. But, but they're not. I don't get it. I, I, what, what, is, what is the deal here? They have this joy about them. How is that? I don't get it. But man, I want that. I want what they've got. I'm inspired by it. As followers of Jesus Christ, we all should be able to walk in such a way that people look at your life, look at our life, and they say, I want that. But you might say, well, you know, I'm not an inspirational person. You know, I'm not Billy Green. I'm not Dr. Martin Luther King. I'm not a good speaker. I'm just a grocery store clerk. Or, or I'm just a factory worker. I'm just a contractor. I'm just a retired nobody. I, I can't be some kind of inspiring person. Let me give you a pop quiz this morning, okay? Shout them out. Give me the answers because I know you're going to know this, right? Pop quiz. Who was Miss America in, in 2010? You don't know that? Come on. Alright, um, let me give you another one then. We'll try this. Who won the Super Bowl in 2007?
Some of you might be saying, well, I feel distant and far from God. I don't even know if there is a God, but Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near to the Lord of Christ. Maybe you feel like you're unlovable and unacceptable. The good news is that Romans 15, 7 says that in Christ, you're accepted. Maybe you feel sinful, filthy, dirty. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that you're a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. But you say, you don't know me. You don't know what I, what I did. You don't know what I've done. You don't know my thoughts. And you can write about me asking this. How many of you this past week decided to persecute somebody? How many of you decided this week to step out and, and kill a Christian? Good, I can see you can't do one all the time. All those passages that I just read were written by a man named Paul when he was known as Saul, was out there persecuting Christians, throwing them in jail, having them killed, applauding that they were dying. But God reached into his life and changed him. We have all these letters from Paul. Paul wrote most of, almost half of the New Testament. You say you're too bad? I say Jesus is too good. We don't deserve it, but he's too good. He frees us from sin. Don't let your past again. Don't let your past determine your future trajectory. You're creating tomorrow's legacy today, right now. No matter what it is you've done in your past, no matter what you've come in here with today, understand this, you're creating tomorrow's legacy right now, today. Because today is a new day. I heard a story about a minister who did a funeral for a girl. And as usual, the, the minister went to the, to the home, to the family, to find out a little bit more about this young 23-year-old girl so that he could represent her well in his funeral eulogy, his service. And so he shows up at the house and he asks the family, so what was this girl known for? What, did, what was she known for? So they put her hand, well, how would they know? There was this long, awkward silence. Finally, somebody pipes up and say, well, she's funny. And everybody's like, yeah, 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 she, she was funny. They started to laugh. Remember that joke she told that one joke? It was great. She was funny, man. And then all kind of came back down and died when he was just so long. That's what she went for. Another very long, awkward silence. And, and uh, finally somebody else speaks up. And, and he says, She loved hot sauce. She loved hot sauce. Oh, she put it on everything. Eggs and, and bread. And, and she loved it on everything. Hot sauce. She loved hot sauce, man. That's That you were funny and you liked hot sauce? I know there's something better. There's something a little better. A good name, someone said, is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver and gold. And hot sauce. 